Hello and welcome to another SciFest Movie Talk episode. In this episode, I will be discussing the 1984 black comedy horror classic, Gremlins. Just a quick note for those of you who haven't seen the movie, um, please note that this episode does include a couple of minor plot spoilers. Um, please do switch off now if you don't want to spoil the movie for you. Um, and when you do get to watch it, you're in for a real treat. Anywho, the film is directed by Joe Dante, um, whose other classic directorial credits include the film's 1990 sequel, the original 1978 Piranha movie, uh, Howling, Inner Space, The Babes, and even Small Soldiers, Looney Tunes Back in Action. Um, and the movie, um, Gremlins, does star Zach Galligan, Phoebe Cates, and of course the ever-adorable Gizmo, um, as voiced by Harry Mandel. The core concept of the film, The Gremlins, um, is based on folklore, dating back to stories that started surfacing from fighter pilots in World War II, about mischievous creatures that have been blamed for numerous uh, and unexplained equipment failures and malfunctions over the years. The gremlins in the film are depicted as small, green, scaly, goblin-esque creatures uh, with an interest uh, or inherent evil streak and a huge appetite for mayhem and destruction. However, they don't start life this way. In fact, they start their life as one of the most adorable creatures ever known, the Mogwai. So, the plot of the film sees a young man given a Mogwai, a small, cute and cuddly looking creature, as a present for Christmas. The Mogwai comes with a number of rules which must be obeyed. Keep them away from bright lights, especially sunlight. That'll kill them. Don't ever, ever get them wet. But, perhaps the most important rule of all, never, ever, ever feed them after midnight. Well, the first two rules I get, the third, I've always kind of pondered what the cutoff is uh, after midnight, because certainly any time is always after midnight. Um, I'd personally be scared to feed the things at any time of day. However, little do the unsuspecting family know that the penalty for breaking the third rule is the transformation of the Mogwais into gremlins. Well, needless to say that the third rule is broken, uh, and once the gremlins are let loose, they wreak havoc on an unsuspecting small town who are helpless um, and, uh, against the deviant and mischievous behaviour of the creatures. At its heart, the film is a comedy, albeit quite dark uh, and quite a dark one, and can be quite tongue-in-cheek at times, with lots of character cameos, especially from Amblin and Warner Brothers Productions, with the likes of E.T. Uh, and the Looney Tunes making an appearance. Certainly to look out for them. And to look also out for homages um, paid to other movies, stereotypes and characters and situations. The antics of the Gremlins isn't just limited to destruction, and to be honest, in a few moments, they can be quite endearing. All this does contrast well with the dark nature of the movie and its many horror elements. The special effects and puppetry were simply ahead of the time, um, and for me, there is very little made uh, of a similar ilk recently that captures the hearts and imaginations of its viewers, um, as this film does. The soundtrack too is fantastic with its music, um, with music by the ever brilliant Jerry Goldsmith. A series of creepy synthesised themes accompanying the movie, along with a brilliantly playful signature theme for the Gremlins, as, as played in full as part of the end credits, just simply set the movie up um, fantastically. Worth a mention is the fact that this film, as stated earlier, is indeed set at Christmas time, being one of my most favourite alternative festive films of all time. To be honest, it does carry a fairly festive feel, certainly at the beginning, uh, and it does even see some of the gremlins getting into the Christmas spirit at times. You'll never forget a group of the haphazard, seemingly enthusiastic gremlins carol singing. Uh, absolutely brilliant. The movie does, however, contain one of the most depressing Christmas stories I've ever heard. The film is an absolute alternative Christmas classic. One of the most memorable moments, uh, oh, well, sorry, one of the most memorable movies from my childhood. In fact, it was the second movie I ever owned on VHS. And I can't recommend it enough. Certainly worth a watch or a revisit. Absolutely excellent storytelling, a perfect Christmas creature feature. So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed. And if you do like this review and my reviews in general, please do leave a like on this page and please do hit that subscribe button. Feel free to leave a like or comment on any of my uh, reviews, especially if you have any ideas. Um, feel free to leave a like or comment on this episode. Uh, I would love to hear from you. Um, for anything movie related, definitely if you have anything 
uh, and suggestions for films you'd like me to watch as part of SciFest Movie Talk upcoming episodes. Thank you for watching.